I gotta start this video first off by stating that I do not watch ROH. I do not follow it. I have no clue what goes on in the promotion. I don't know storylines. I don't know angles. I don't know who's the good guy. I don't know who the bad guy is. However, today I just felt like watching some good wrestling. And I was on YouTube earlier today and I saw that ROH was having a pay-per-view today called Best in the World 2011, an internet pay-per-view. I was like thinking to myself, man, I want to see some good wrestling. You know what? Might as well just check this pay-per-view out and, and see how it is. And especially for $15, I mean, it's worth a shot, right? So I order it and I watch it. And I want to be the first one to say that this pay-per-view, it was great. I will say that. However, uh, this pay-per-view was not perfect like a lot of the ROH fans are going to lead you guys on to believe because there were flaws in this just like every other pay-per-view from every other wrestling promotion. Uh, but with that being said, let's get to the review. Uh, the very first match, and uh, this is where the very first flaw comes in, uh, Colt Cabana taking on Thomas So Champa with the embassy in his corner. Now, this was the opening match, and I gotta say, for the opening match of an ROH pay per view, I was highly disappointed in this. Uh, this was a seven minute long match, and the match just never really got going. It was slow paced, it was just not enough time, that's for sure. And the finish was botched, or at least it looked like it was botched to me. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa got the win. He tried to do some kind of code breaker type of move, and it didn't really come out the way it should have, I think. I mean, it just didn't look good. But uh, I got to say, for the opening match, not impressed whatsoever. It definitely needed more time. Second match of the night, uh, the prodigy Mike Bennett taking on Jay Lethal. Now, this was Jay Lethal's first match back at ROH, which was kind of cool. Uh, I really like that part of it. Uh, but however, this match again just did not have enough time. Six minutes long. I mean, it was still a good match, don't get me wrong, but this match could have been great had it had enough time, but it just didn't. Uh, Lethal does get the win with the uh, elbow drop from the top rope. Uh, and it was a good little match. Next up was the No Holds Barred Street Fight, uh, pitting Homicide up against Rhino with the Embassy in Rhino's corner. Uh, I gotta say that this was a pretty decent little No Holds Barred Street Fight. It got 10 minutes. I thought that was a, a decent amount of time. However, you know, with the street fight, uh, I would expect to see a little bit of blood. I mean, this isn't the WWE, right? Uh, I would think that ROH would, you know, put a little blood in this kind of match, but uh, there was no blood to be found. No big deal, though. It was still a good match. Uh, Homicide and Rhino did a really good job. Homicide took a lot of bumps, and uh, he did earn the victory. Uh, Rhino, uh, he went for the win, uh, but failed. He set up a table in the corner of the ring, and uh, he tried to gore Homicide through the table, but Homicide somehow blocked the gore and pinned Rhino all in the same motion. I'm not sure how he pulled that off, but it looked pretty sweet. But uh, after the match, Rhino got his. He uh, finally was able to gore Homicide through the table, and uh, he proceeded just to beat uh, Homicide up. And uh, it ended up being a good little match. I did like it. Next up was Steve Carino with Jimmy Jacobs in his corner, taking on Michael Elgin with Truth Martini in his corner. Uh, I gotta say, uh, for the most part, this was a good match. However, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more time. Uh, only eight minutes, and uh, to me, that's just not enough time. Uh, I did like this match, though. These two guys are some big boys, and uh, they really went out there and beat the hell out of one another. I really liked Michael Elgin in this match. He just looked like a beast, and uh, he ended up getting the win uh, with a power bomb. and that power bomb looked really sick. It was really great to see. Um, and Michael Elgin, like I said, he got the win. Uh, but after the match, uh, Kevin Steen uh, had a segment. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, he ended up beating the holy shit out of Steve Carino. Dropped him on his head. And they had to take an intermission after that. <laughs> uh, I mean, he dropped him on his head. And they are like, oh man, we got to take an intermission. 
And I swear that intermission was like 30 minutes long. And when they came back, Steve Carino was st still in the middle of the ring. I was like, damn, he's really selling that. Or he was really hurt. I'm not really sure what it was. Uh, but yeah, there was an intermission on this pay-per-view. That's something that I'm not used to whatsoever. Uh, it kind of was a buzzkill. Uh, but I totally do understand why they took an intermission. Uh, because the next three matches, uh, which all were title matches, ended up being the best matches of the night. And I'm talking about three matches that ended up being about 96 minutes in total. Three matches were about an hour and a half long. That's insane. Uh, but let's get to the final three matches. Uh, first was the ROH TV title match. El Generico taking on the champion Christopher Daniels. Now, this was the first great match of the night. Uh, you know, I was really wondering about this pay-per-view. I was like, where is this pay-per-view going to pick up? And uh, it picked up with this match right here. I gotta say, it was a really great match. 20 minutes long, a great amount of time. Uh, El Generico gets the win. He becomes the new ROH TV title champion. And he gets the win with the Brain Buster off the turnbuckle. It was awesome looking. I just couldn't really fathom doing a move like that. I've seen a Brain Buster done numerous times, but never like that. It was really sweet looking. And I gotta say, this was a great back and forth kind of match. Good outside ring action, uh, a lot of false finishers, just a great amount of time in general, and I just really like the match. Great match. Okay, next up is the four-way elimination ROH tag team title match. The Kings of Wrestling taking on the All Night Express, taking on the Briscoes, taking on the Wrestling's Greatest Tag Team. Wow, this match was exhausting, and I don't mean that in a bad way. This match was great. Uh, it got 40 minutes in time i cannot believe how long it got it was amazing to see that amount of time in one match uh but the briscoes they were eliminated first by the all night express and then the all night express got eliminated by the kings of wrestling and then of course uh the world's greatest tag team and the kings of wrestling were left in the match and uh wow what a great match talk about great near finishes great tag work just overall great match and uh the wrestling's greatest tag team ended up retaining the tag titles, and I gotta say it was well worth it. Uh, the greatest moments in this match had to be when Kenny King and Shelton Benjamin were in the match. Those two shined in this match, and I really hope to see a match between these two one day in the near future because I'm sure these guys will tear the house down. But uh, I gotta say, overall. A great, great match. And there's one thing in this match I don't think I've ever seen before that really impressed me. And that was the uh, no hands airplane spin. Uh, that was awesome. I believe Claudio did that move on Charlie Haas. But uh, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you checking that out. It was so cool to see. Uh, but anyways, I got to say it was a great match. Okay, last but certainly not least, uh, the last match of the night, and without a doubt, the match of the night, the ROH world title match, Davey Richards taking on the champion, Eddie Edwards. Wow, this match was awesome. 36 minutes long, and these guys went back and forth, kicking each other's ass, and just not really giving up at all throughout this match. I mean, they didn't really let up one moment. Uh, a lot of great false finishes, a lot of nice outside work, and just the all-around great match. This match was put together so well, I'm just not really sure how to explain its awesomeness, but I'm just going to put it at that. It was an awesome match. Davey Richards is the new champion. Uh, the American Wolves, they put on a great match one-on-one, -on -one, and you know, sad to see that they're no longer a tag team, but damn, man, they can put on a great one-on-one -on -one match, and I'm really glad... That I got to see this match. So overall, I got to say the pay-per-view was great. Was it perfect? No, it wasn't perfect. Is any pay-per-view perfect? No, I don't think so. <laughs> but I got to say it was very enjoyable. Uh, I will admit, though, having to hear Kevin Kelly commentate all night really did put a bummer on my mood. But other than that, it was a pretty damn good show. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, what'd you like? What'd you dislike? Uh, this is Gold Dizzy, guys. Peace out.